Hi folks, my name is Lionel here with Bison Transport. I'm sitting with a, a few gentlemen here that we're going to be talking about some of our frequently asked questions and comments relating to ELDs and, well, ELD related uh, type of topics here. So how about if we could just have you quickly say your, your name, uh, what your role is at Bison, how long you've been here, and then we'll get into things. Uh, my name is Murray Manlock. I've been with Bison for 15 and a half years. I'm a long haul truck driver and in-cab instructor. Okay, great. Thank you, Murray. My name is Marius Tishuk. Uh, I am with the company 8 years. Uh, I am a driver also and cab instructor. Okay. So you've been with Bison for 8 years? Yes. Yeah, okay. And uh, some of you will know uh, Marius from the ELD, the hard truth of, uh, or the hard truth of ELDs uh, video, which was uh, quite popular. And we'll, actually, some of the comments here mm -hmm. will be from that uh, video specifically. Perfect. And Garth. Uh, Garth Pitzel, Director of Safety with Bison Transport for 24 years. Great. Well, welcome, gentlemen. So let's dive into things. So what we're going to be do, doing here is we're actually commenting on the comments. And we do that on, on YouTube and on our blog, but we wanted to be able to put a, a video together with some of the more common ones. Now, I'm sure you spend some time uh, your, yourselves on the internet, and you can imagine that the internet will never fail us, right? We get yes. all types of, <laughs> all types of comments. It can be the most benign content and, and some people just w will get uh, quite worked up over things. So, so here, here's just an example of some contrast that we often see. So uh, Jason Johnson about nine months ago commented this, uh, said worthless information if you're a driver. So I want to comments to our videos. So worthless information if you're a driver gives nothing new about how shippers could help with the process as far as loading and unloading times. The questions were nothing new. Meanwhile, Leonard Burns, Burns, right after that, says, excellent video, thanks for sharing. So, you know, again, we can't please everybody, but you will see a, a common trend in, in some of these questions, and I have them broken out by, by uh, different uh, topics anyway. So, so uh, the next uh, real comment I wanted to uh, chat with all of you about, and feel free to jump in when, when you feel necessary, but the first one, is, uh, Jamie Sherrill uh, commented, this is actually recently, um, saying, questioning about ELDs and saying improving drivers quality of life question mark question mark question mark um, no one can be told when to be tired and when to be awake it doesn't work like that not to mention how can we have breaks if we have enough time on our clocks if we don't have enough time on our clocks to have breaks and he says that this is outright lying basically so do, do, do you have any thoughts on on that about you know not being told when to be tired or, or have, a, have a break well I think the the thing that people get mixed up is the hours of service rules are the hours of service rules and the ELD mandate is just the recording of the hours of service regulations on a daily basis for a driver. So we, we can be, uh, we can say that there's a, a, a fault in the hours of service regulations with the window maybe being too tight, especially in the United States so that drivers can react to different things like when they're not feeling well, they're tired, or driving through large cities at certain times of, of, of the, the day, whether it's morning or uh, afternoon rush. The ELD mandate is again separate from that and it's just the record keeping of the hours of service regulations on a daily basis for a driver. So ELD has got nothing to do with really the rules and regulations of, of hours of service. Now for the drivers, uh, I guess I'm going to let you answer that question on how the hours of service affect those types of things. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. It's just um, regulations are one thing and when we are tired, that's another thing. Uh, when you're tired, you don't drive. When you're tired, you stop, you rest. And of course, there's not, uh, nobody to tell you hey, it is you have to stop or no it's just simple when you're tired you don't drive and regulations are regulations you just try to fit with yourself just to the regulations and 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 that's that's what it is it's uh, i yes and like guard said is eld it is the mandate it is just like there and uh, we just follow the rules okay. yeah. the rules are there for a reason yes the eld mandate yes is what pretty much a logbook the recording of what we're supposed to do so on that note uh, your first eight hours of your day when you're supposed to drive, it just requires you to take a half hour break to rest. 
you can do that at seven hours and 45 minutes. So what the gentleman said is not crazy. You just have to listen to yourself when you want to do it. Okay. Right? That's, to me, that's the easiest way to explain it. Right, and that's where being a professional comes being in, professional right? Being able in. to yes. manage. Knowing, manage, yeah. Yeah. when you have to take your Planning. Break, when you're going to do it, plan your whole day, and go from there. Yes. All right, great. Thanks, gentlemen. So this next uh, question is along the similar lines, and I think one thing that we need to keep in mind is that not every person that's commenting on our videos is, is working at Bison, right? So yes. keep in mind, we've been on ELDs for many years and, and you know we, we know how to operate on them. We have a right to decide. So a lot of people aren't in that environment. So w when they're being forced to get something to the, the destination and they're, maybe it's uh, illegal or so on, you, you can see why some people get more worked up over some of these things. So, but here, uh, this uh, comment here, hollow, hollow point, has an interesting comment and it's, it's not really disputing anything, but it's just asking about situations that actually happen on the road. So he's saying about what happens if one of the drivers uh, is, you know, delivering a load on a tight schedule and the driver becomes tired or sick to their stomach, you know, something like that, you know, and, but they need to stop for a couple hours, but they don't have, again, as this is an hours of service, but they're really asking if, if that case is, that situation happens, you're getting, you know, close to your destination, but you're physically sick, how, how is that actually dealt with? you know, to be within the regulations and within, you know, the confines of ELDs and, and to satisfy the customer and the company. For us, it's very easy because we have a right to decide policy where the driver determinate if he can do it or not. And if, <coughs> a good point, if it's in our company, we have the right to decide policy where if you get sick, you just, um, you just let the team know, operations know, hey, I'm sick, I cannot do it. What we do, we just we can reschedule the load, we can uh, switch the trailer, we can do something help the driver uh, to survive the day, the rescue the load, and the most important, the driver, who's decide he cannot fit to his duty today, he can rest and get well back again, and uh, he can let us know what's going on, and and um, and next day maybe he's okay and he can continue the the trip with different trailer or. Uh, with a different load and um, yeah that's what we do the right to decide policy what we have here this is just beautiful thing what uh, uh, preventing things like this and and driver doesn't have the pressure what to do next right well, that's interesting so if I'm understanding correctly you know again if you just take this tool and put it on a, an environment that isn't supporting it that then that's creating a, a pretty difficult situation for for drivers right so yep. you need to have that tool but also the support system and the, the procedures I, I guess yes. in place to deal with these situations yes. well again the best way to answer that question is just because you have 11 hours today to drive doesn't mean the professional driver should drive those 11 hours yes. depending on condition of equipment roads weather or themselves right and that that's where you have to let that judgment up to the person performing the task, the driver behind the wheel, to make those decisions. Wholeheartedly agree on that one. Yes, it's you might be close to the customer, but still you have to think about yourself, the safety of yourself, and the public around you. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have the greatest tool, the right to decide. And other companies might not, but it's going to be a learning, growing process for everybody. So really with the hours of service and the, the technology of ELDs that, that will, in a sense, force a lot of companies if they want to continue and be successful, that they'll have to have those. They're going to have to come up they, with that. They have to come up with the, with the plan, plan B for the drivers. What they, they will support the drivers when they're not going fit to the, to the, to the duty because yeah. we are just only humans. We, there's nothing what we can do. We just, everyone, every driver is human and have a break point where he cannot fit to the duty today and and always we we have to support the driver great thanks so this next uh, gentleman here uh, harold goff we actually had a, a really good uh, discussion and debate uh, in, in youtube going back and forth and um this comment actually uh, marius was before the video that we did with you or actually we had just shot it but it hadn't been published yet so harold says thanks for putting this video bison but let me address an issue that every driver including myself is dealing with on a weekly basis it says notice that you didn't have any drivers present in your video. Um, you should have because we're the ones who run things and we're the very, very best source on how things are, are working out there. Mm -hmm. um, so then he goes in and talks about hours of service, but what was uh, great with Harold by, you know, we went back and forth and actually when your video came out, I shared it with him and, and by the end, 
uh, he, he basically was thanking us for the videos and saying how helpful it was and that he looked forward to future, uh, future, 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 future comments. Yes. Yeah. Um, but one of the things he talks about is, you know, how he, this is a direct quote here. He says, I get no less than four to five hours a day wasted towards my 14 hour duty clock. And a common uh, concern that we get in our, our comments really, and, and this isn't about um, complaining about shippers necessarily, but it's really identifying that as a big issue. Some people had commented where they've had a shipper tell them, look it, we know we don't have to pay you more until four hours is up. So you go and, and sit over there and when we're ready for you, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with you. Um, I, I'm not sure that that's common. Again, that uh, I, I don't work in that environment, but would you guys have any thoughts on, on that? Do we see that much or is that common in the industry? Well, again, from a from a business perspective, Bison has has worked at great lengths with the customers to get them an understanding of a driver's time is valuable. So a driver sitting at a shipper for four hours is is not good for the driver. It's not good for our business. So we have worked with customers to help reduce that time. Through multiple or through different ways some is the, the the shipper are living up to loading in a quicker time or the or buys and investing in putting trailers there to preload trailers or have a drop location that we just drop the trailer and they get it on offloaded so we as a business have went through a different three different ways to help that process of again accounting for that driver's time or reducing the driver's wait time while on the road and that is again talking to customers to and, and highlighting it coming up with a standardized when we're going to charge for for demerge uh, for that mm -hmm. and then putting trailers at customers or our shippers or consignee locations so that our drivers just have to drop or pick up loads so that reduces the amount of time a driver uh, as I think Harold was his yeah, name, Harold, yeah. uh, says that he waits every day. So we've taken a very proactive approach to that and invested a lot of time, effort, and dollars in, in our, uh, you know, we're almost three and a half, close to four trailers per tractor now. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason why is, is, is so that we can keep our drivers moving and use their times for the, the appropriate thing, and that is driving. Okay, great. So uh, obviously this is something you deal with every day as professional drivers. Are, are you seeing the same thing that Garth is uh, speaking about there? Yeah, there's, well, for as aspects, there's a, say right now it would be about 50-50. There is a lot closer in our lanes that we travel in. Majority of the times, yes, it's set up that way pretty close. Okay. Right. Then when you get out of our travel lanes, then it goes to where Harold's talking about. Mm -hmm. You can hit that customer, you get there at the appointment time, and... They can take up, depending on what they're loading, if it's set up, you could sit there for four to five hours. But, the, yeah. but it's, that's on the <coughs> other end, it's not happening as much. Right. Where for some of the newer people that are getting into the ELDs, right, well, they didn't step up like we have mm -hmm. to solve that problem. They're going to have a lot of that problem, and it's going to be their growing pains they're going to have to deal with. Right. Well, one of the things, and it looks like you have something to say, but I'll get to you just next, but one of the things I know we've talked about in other videos is that uh, in those in, in situations where shippers are are highly inefficient, that those companies will really struggle to get capacity because carriers like Bison aren't going to want to deal with those people when they know they're wasting drivers' time, right? And carriers can get a lot better as well. Like, we're not trying yes. to put, place this all on shippers, but uh, again, that related to the, the comment here, so. With the time, I think everyone will adjust uh, themselves to the new, new future, mm -hmm. which is ELDs. But um, at the same time, I like to mention one thing is, uh, the, two, the, the thing is with the driver. driver. If the driver is proactive too, in his end, uh, making sure the appointment is made on time, okay? Be there on time, not be late. Um, le making sure it is the appointment is made for him. Uh, let, the, in his end, uh, let the dispatch know if there's any delays. They can work with the with the customer, with the receiver, saying, or the shipper, uh, saying the driver will be on time there. Right. Then here's, the driver will do everything that is possible to, to making sure that the customer is uh, uh, notified Okay. when he's coming 
and then we have no stress when we late or five minutes, ten minutes, they know you're going to be late, then they can adjust, oh. readjust whatever they have to in the shipper or receiver uh, to, to, to arrive in the time what, what the driver will be. Oh. And um, that's that's my point of view too. Great, well, no, great, great point. I'm glad you added that. Uh, so we'll, a little bit more with Harold and then we'll move on here. But one of the turning points for Harold actually wasn't our comment, it was someone else, uh, Derek, uh, Dennis Mayer, sorry. Um, so this is interesting. And uh, Dennis says, Harold, I've been on e-logs e for 18 months and several things have improved. And he's got an interesting story here, which I wouldn't say is an ideal situation, but it, it's still a, a telling uh, of where things are going. Where things are going. Uh, so he says, several things have improved. More detention pay. My dispatcher tells brokers and shippers that deten detention pay starts after one hour. I pulled into a shipper last week and I saw all these trucks sitting. So there goes my time, he thinks, right? Uh, the shipper asks him if he's on paper or e-logs. So he says, e-logs and he gave them the door and basically he got he got out of there in no time so he had asked the shipper what would have happened if he said he was on paper and this uh shipper would have said well you'd be sitting with all those people over there so again not an ideal situation but uh, again i think it's telling ab about a little bit of the shift uh, you know from from the shippers being able to see that they need to become more efficient any any comments uh on that that's awesome but that's what's going to happen eventually in the future with everybody getting on the ELD mandates and, and with the hours of service thing is going to be, the pressure is going to be put more onto the shippers and the receivers to actually start being more responsible and maintaining, helping us with our hours. Because a lot of them right now are saying they don't want anybody sleeping there and you're going, well, I'm on ELD, so I'm out of my hours. I kind of sleep here. Yeah. That, and, that they're, and they're going, no, you can't. Right. right. So then you're, there's that dilemma, like, what do you do? What do you do? Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, I can't move. They're telling you to move. It's like, well, then. Yeah, th that that is uh, that is a, a topic that has come up quite a bit in the yeah. comments for but sure. Sometimes is um, at the same time when we waiting at the shipper or receiver uh, is um, again we come back to the be proactive as a driver and let the shipper or receiver know, hey, I am on the elox. I have that many hours left. Can we do something to help me out? Because the trip maybe they don't see the big picture of the receiver or shipper and they. They don't know exactly where is the truck stop, right? You have to reach and tell them about how many hours you have left. Hey, then that's what I can do. Can we do just take me sooner? Uh, can we work out this, right, the problem? And, uh, and sometimes it's, uh, it's helpful to let them know because they don't see you sitting and you have only that many hours left and, and, mm -hmm. and waiting to the last second when you're showing up and say, hey, guys, I have to sleep here or, you know. That's 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 the, that's what I'm thinking. And I would expect the responsibility as a carrier, right, that we need to also again become more efficient because if we are going to recruit and ret retain yes. professional drivers, we have to, or we won't survive, right? So, Indeed. Indeed. so yes, def yeah. definitely, there's some growing pains here, but you know, looking forward, you know, it'd be safe to expect that the things would definitely improve Very for the, improve the average the professional driver, right? With the time, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a couple of comments here relating to safety. So uh, John Sizemore here says uh, ELDs are bull, uh, it was something else there. Uh, he says he, it makes it more dangerous because the driver will be in a hurry all the time racing a clock. Well, again, it, 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 it really comes down to that, your, your, your culture of your business. If, okay. if, if your business is driven by your e-log or your getting that shipment there no matter what that's going to dictate how your business operates again the goal of our business is to provide a high quality service to our customers and to our drivers is to make sure that they have the necessary skills to make it home safely and that they do make it home safely and uh, is there a little bit of a battle of who wins the, the between the customer or the driver? Well, in our business, the driver wins every day. If the load is going to be late, it's late. If the driver can't do it legally or safely, it can't be done. And that is the right to decide it. it, it it's it, it's some most simplistic form is just that. So businesses have to make a decision on on how they choose to operate. Now whether you have an ELD or you have paper, 
Uh, it's are you going to conform to the rules and regulations, and are you going to be more, uh, morally responsible to your employees and contractors and support them in the time of, again, whether it's th their own uh, condition or the condition of roads or equipment, are you going to support them when issues come up? That's really what it comes down to. So you, you can't really blame ELDs for, are you going to, because even if you have an ELD, there are going to be companies that might say, just get the load there, mm. even though it sh the, the driver doesn't have the hours to do that. Mm. It's going to choose, again, businesses are going to be, have a choice to make on how they're going to fundamentally operate. ELDs will make it way easier to see companies that choose to bend the rules. Uh, and again, we as we have been, uh, you know, we we as a business uh, over 20 some years ago made it very clear we're going to operate within the legal requirements that we were placed upon us, and we've taken it one step further to support the driver in making sure they make it home safely. Because when they make it home safely, we've delivered that customer's load. So it really comes down to that. Very true. If, uh, if we cannot uh, operate safe, then uh, how we can do it? It's just, uh, just only one, one way. To get the load on time, then this is all about the planning. When we have a planning in place, we plan, we, we plan everything, then the ELDs are pretty much our friend. What is that way? Because it will preventing us to get the fine because we go over hours and just like it's watching us. Hey, don't do this, this and that. And you don't have to sit in there with the calculator and looking and just, okay, I didn't mark this and that. It's everything in there. All what we do just right now is just like use this as a beautiful tool to help us to survive the day and making sure we are more safe there. Right. And, uh, and if we have uh, all team working together towards support the, you know, the driver with the ELDs and this is the, our new, new future pretty much yeah. is, is that's it and right now we all we have to readjust everything but fortunately we as the company Bison we, 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 we long enough in with ELDs then we don't have this problems but um, uh, other companies right now they have to readjust everything towards ELDs. Yeah. Have you have either of you had uh, discussions with uh, any of your friends or colleagues that may drive with other companies or talking to someone at a scale or, or truck stop? What types of things are you hearing? You know, right now, like we're filming this in almost in late February, so ELDs have you know have been in since mid December. We've been on them since 2014, and the grace period I believe is April 1st, 2018. Yes. So that's coming up in no time, especially by the time this video comes out, it's going to be really, really close. So w what sort of things have you been hearing out, out on the roads? I let uh, Mary answer this for first. I've been on holidays for two oh, weeks. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Somebody is <laughs> lucky here. I'm um, not sure. haven't heard too much about the chit-chat, whatever that's out there, but you can just notice at the truck stops that they are filling up much sooner. Okay. Before, you, know, you had a period about uh, maybe 7, 8 o'clock we would start filling up. By five o'clock now, at all the truck stops uh, are filling up. Mm. Everybody's actually following part of the ELDs, like they're really yeah. sticking to it now. They might start early, but they're stopping early. Okay. And anybody that's coming in later, so it's going to lead to a parking problem eventually. Well, this is a this is, I guess would be. <laughs> but a, as a professional yeah. driver, we need to try to plan ourselves. Yes, uh, to make everything work better. But there again, it all depends on when you have to make the delivery and if you get held up at a customer. Mm -hmm. So there's so many variables here that are going to change things. When we were on paper, you had you had a little bit of wiggle room that you could make look good, but you're still legal. Right. Now with the ELD mandate, it's the wiggle room is gone. Yeah. And yes, our, our policy here is we follow it legally. It's great. It's totally refreshing. <clears throat> you know, you can just do your job and everybody's happy but it's going to be very interesting 
what's going to be in the future for everybody. Yeah, an interesting comment I've heard before is, you know, there, there's a lot of different jobs, but there aren't many where, like as a driver breaking the, the law, they are the ones that are putting themselves at risk and maybe yeah. it's the company forcing them, but there aren't many careers where where you need to, you know, you're you're putting yourself under so much exposure for, for risk, right? Yeah. In, in, the end the, in the end, in the end of the day, it is up to driver to decide what's a safe, what is not safe, what you can do to make sure you go and come back home, right? Then it is the choice you make every single day. And is uh, if somebody can tell you, hey, this have to be there, it's up to you. Yeah. Is you, you, you're planning, you do everything what is possible. And yes, the track slips are full up very fast. Mm -hmm. And um, what I notice is uh, the time when it's around 7, 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. and they just start to be full and the yeah. driver it is which is good is for business i see the restaurants are filling up yeah. too in the end of the day the drivers coming talking mm -hmm. and it's just i think this is the new future i think yeah. this is what's going to happen where you get going to see uh, more drivers in the restaurants sitting chatting talking and making the better business i i believe so too right yeah. and, and 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 this is something what i am excited about yeah. it is would be just new future for everyone yeah. Right? yeah no it's interesting and, and speaking of parking that is a major issue right in in uh, north america right um and and this would be a good example of unintended consequences right like you know with with hours of service and with elds you know with the goal of making things better and, and safer you know the short-term challenge and, and you guys would know better than i would but again if every all you have the same amount of drivers in the road but all of them have to be off by say seven or eight now you're compounding that that parking issue right yeah. so that's an example i i guess where i'm looking at it from the outside looking in is you know just because we have elds it doesn't mean that everyone's gonna like hold hands and, and get along and everything's gonna be perfect there's there's challenges with any any new uh change especially with regulations but at the end of the day, you know, the, the goal is to be able to improve safety. Parking will improve over time as it's more clear that, uh, because uh, truck stops, for example, if they know they have more truckers, uh, they, more professional drivers afford. eating there, well, now they can maybe invest in their uh, in, the parking. In, in the parking and the restaurant to attract more of, of those drivers. So those, so those changes will take longer yes. than, than just, you know, flipping a switch on, on ELD. So. And, and the other thing is, is drivers are going to, you know, they if 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 they have the ability to, they'll change their driving pattern and they'll start earlier to finish earlier, so that they can start. Right, you, you're you're going to see drivers uh, figure that out, and and so there's there are there are solutions to it, and and uh, I, I think that you know we we have lots of drivers already that. Uh, prefer running uh, late, starting later in the day or real early in the morning and preferring to run and we have the ability to take advantage of that from a freight perspective and and uh, you know so those things are all going to happen to uh, to again make uh, it a little easier on uh, on the end user the driver perfect yep all right great well thanks thanks for all of your comments here so just to to wrap up, uh, we obviously aren't going to be able to convert everybody. Not everyone is going to have the same beliefs that uh, we have. And there's a lot of people that are still questioning ELDs and hours of service. So you can't you know, be 100% legal and earn a lot of money where we prove that isn't the case uh, every, every single day, right? And we've been doing this for, for a long period of time. But I definitely appreciate you sharing your personal experience out on the road and, and you know, as a, a leader in, in safety here at, at Bison, that definitely is helpful. And, you know, I, I think for a lot of people, if they are working with a company that doesn't necessarily support them, they're letting shippers, you know, waste their time and they are being forced to in, into that, that gray area, you know, short term ELDs are not going to be positive for, for that person. Right. But I, I would expect, as it seems like you folks uh, as well, that, you know, these changes will be again continuing to improve the, the safety and ultimately the earning potential and the quality of uh, the the professional driver profession. So, do you guys have any other final uh, comments that you'd you'd like to make or anything that we haven't touched on that you think would be a, a good point to, to share today? Nope. I don't know. Well, you guys are getting along now. Yeah. So yes. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Almost. You know, again, I, I think the you know the misconception is that you 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 cannot 
again, our drivers are, you know, our goal is to get them 3,000 miles a week, and, and I know the two of you are, are doing that every week, and you're doing it legally within the hours of service, so it's, it's very achievable. Is it, is it easy to do? Not all the time. Uh, but again, as, as we as a business, as we see scenarios and situations with customers, we're going to get involved in that to, to make it better for, for our drivers. But the rules are the rules, and, and whether you did it on paper or whether you did it, uh, it's an ELD, the rules are the rules. Whether we agree with them or not, they're there. And I think, again, people confuse the two. And for us, we've been able to uh, operate and have our drivers operate at a high, a high standard. Uh, and again, the consistency of miles, there's a lot of combinations to that, but it really is the consistency of freight that allows our drivers to, to, to do that. So um, today they might not be able to put that uh, 500 miles in because of weather or their own condition, but tomorrow they'll be able to put 550 because we have, they have that load on and they have the ability to drive. And I think that that's really what allows us as a business to be successful in our drivers is we have that network of freight to keep them moving and it's not that hurry up and wait where you, you get a load to somewhere and then you sit for two days and now you gotta make up for those two days. We, we have a consistency and a network of freight that keeps our drivers moving so to operate within the parameters become way easier to do is because of that and I think that's our biggest competitive advantage as a business for our drivers. And I don't know. Totally agree with you on that one, yes. Because yeah, we're true. not like the smaller companies, they're you know 50, 60 trucks, whatever, they're only working on what they can, so it's live load, live unload, sit, wait, try to find it. Whereas with our company and our customers, we have the ability to travel for out of the six days, but we're not hanging onto the same trailer. So we have live unloads, but then preloaded trailers and it just you get to keep moving you're moving all the time so you have a chance to make make a make a living and still get home on a regular basis that's great yeah and that that's really the the main thing people are concerned about right, right. is their amount of home time, home and, time and, and earnings right and, uh, and we can yeah. make this happen and we yes. do it safely exactly. <laughs> and safely. thanks for adding <laughs> yes and safely that's great well thanks again gentlemen for uh, sharing your comments today and thanks to everyone for watching today uh, we definitely appreciate uh, all of the uh, comments and and likes and, and shares and, and dislikes whatever you'd, you'd like to comment um, but we do uh, we do just so you know look at all of the different comments that we get and reply to as many of them as we can and we also do look at these comments to be able to identify certain trends um, and, and find out what's interesting to our audience so we know what type of content we can create and what type of answers people have um, because then that, that helps guide us uh, to be able to answer those questions. Uh, we're trying to move the industry forward as well as our own business and, and we feel that we're, uh, we, we play a big role in that which is part of the reason why we want to share the types of things that we're doing and, and share the, the great people that we have on our team and, and what they're doing as well. So thank you for watching.